Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about an Algebra 2 and pre-calculus topic. It's properties of exponents. So here's what I'm talking about. If I have, for instance, something like x squared times x cubed, and I want to multiply these together, what do I do? This is known as the multiplication property. And with the multiplication property, you actually add the exponents. So it's 2 plus 3 equals x to the fifth, and that's what that becomes. Now why is it called the multiplication property when you're doing addition? It's because you're multiplying the x squared and the x cubed, that's what you're multiplying. And what we say is when you multiply the bases, and they have the same base, they both have base x in this example, then you can add the exponents. The same is true if, for instance, I have something like 2 to the fourth times 2 to the first, Again, same base, I can add the exponents, 2 to the 4 plus 1 power, which is 2 to the 5th, and actually 2 to the 5th we know, it's, it's actually 32, and you can simplify that down to there. So that's the first property of exponents. The second property we have is the division property, which is going to be the exact opposite of the multiplication property. So this is when I have something like x to the 4th divided by x squared, something like this. Whenever you're dividing numbers that have the same base, you subtract the exponents. It's going to become x to the fourth minus 2, like this. And so then in this example, you get x squared. Now, one thing you have to be careful with the division property is that if you ever have negative exponents, what I'm saying is this is a possible example you can see. x to the seventh divided by x to the negative third. It's still subtraction. It's, it's going to be x to the seventh minus negative 3, and since that's a minus a negative number, it becomes positive, so that's actually x to the 10th, and you do have to be careful of that. It can very easily sneak up on you. So that's it for the division property. And the last property we have is the power property. We use this one whenever we have a power raised to another power. So for instance, if I have x cubed, and that's raised to the fourth, then I multiply my exponents, x to the 3 times 4 power. That's going to become x to the 12th. Okay, so that's it for the three properties of exponents. Now there's still two things I want to talk about before we move on to some example problems to try and master this topic. So if I ever give you a negative exponent, let's say I give you 5 to the negative second power, and I want to know what this equals. Remember that a negative power just means reciprocal. And if you don't know what the word reciprocal means, I'm going to show you in two seconds, but probably the word you do know is flip it. You just flip it. And what does that mean? It means that right now I have five to the negative second. I'm going to flip it so that it's one over five now to the positive second. So again, this is what we started with negative power. All you do is put it in the denominator. Now, the reason why I don't always say put it in the denominator is because what if I have a negative exponent in the denominator? Like instead, what if I gave you 1 over 8 to the negative third power? Well, then this, again, reciprocal, because a negative power, reciprocal of this, or flip it, would be 8 to the positive 3 power over 1, which you don't have to write over 1. You can just write 8 cubed like that. So that's what we do for negative exponents. And then the last thing I want to show you is if you have something like a square root or something even more complicated than that. So if I ever have a square root of something, I need you to know that this can be rewritten as x to the 1 half. I'm about to show you a bunch of these actually. If I have the cube root of x, that is x to the 1 third. If I have the 10th root of x, that is x to the 1 tenth power. So as you can see, Whatever the blank root is, that's what goes in the denominator of my exponent. And for the square root specifically, technically there should be a 2 there, but we never actually write the 2 for a square root. It's assumed it's there already, but you do need to know there's a 2 there. And then what if I have something like this? What if I have the square root of x cubed? Well, this can be rewritten like this, x to the 3 halves power, because the 3 is in the numerator and the square root's in the denominator. If I have square root of x to the seventh, that's going to be x to the seven halves. And if I have something like the fifth root of x to the ninth, that is going to be x to the nine fifths power. 
So hopefully that makes sense now. And by the way, we can also do this property in reverse. In other words, if I give you x to the 3 fourths, then you can rewrite this as the fourth root of x cubed. It depends on what the question's asking in terms of what you want to do. And probably the hardest question you'll ever see in this class is if they combine negative exponents with fractions. In other words, how would I reduce x to the negative one half power? Well, we do it one thing at a time. Like the negative exponent we said before, that's the reciprocal. It goes in the denominator. So it's x to the one half in the denominator. And we need to remember that x to the one half is really a square root of x. And so that's what that would equal. And if I had something more complicated, like let's say I had x to the negative seven over four, well, first, again, reciprocal, because it's a negative exponent, one over x to the seven fourths. And then I can rewrite this as one over the four in the denominator means it's the fourth root. And the seven in the numerator means that this is x to the seventh. And so that's what that is. Okay, so that's enough of me talking. Now let's go ahead and get to some example problems. So let's say I want to multiply a squared times a to the fourth times a to the zero. How would I multiply these together? Well, this is gonna be the multiplication property. So all that means is I add the exponents together, two plus four plus zero, which doesn't matter. So we get a to the sixth power, and that's that, easy. For the next one I have, let's say I have c squared times the square root of c divided by c cubed. So for this one, I use a bunch of properties. Number one, I have multiplication in the numerator. Two, I have division in the denominator. And three, I have a square root, which I will be rewriting that as c to the one half power. So now, let me just rewrite this. c squared times c to the one half divided by c cubed. And now I want to do the multiplication property for the numerator. That's going to involve adding my exponents. So c to the two plus one half in the numerator, and in the denominator I have c cubed. What is two plus one half? I know you're gonna say two and a half or 2.5, but I want it as an improper fraction. In other words, I want a common denominator. So two plus one half, the common denominator is two. So really what I have here is four halves plus one half. That's gonna give me five halves. So numerator, c to the five halves, denominator, c cubed. Now I can do subtraction. So that's going to be c to the 5 halves power minus 3. Why is it minus 3? Because this is the division property, which means you subtract. So again, I need a common denominator to do 5 halves minus 3. That's going to be a common denominator of 2 again. So it becomes 5 halves minus 6 halves. And by the way, I'm assuming you know how to add and subtract fractions. If you don't, you need to learn, watch another video, just Google it, learn it, and then this will make more sense. And 5 halves minus 6 halves is going to be negative 1 half. So what we have here is c to the negative 1 half power. A lot of times your teacher won't like you to have a negative power in this class. So there's a good chance that they're going to ask you to rewrite it as 1 over c to the 1 half. Because that's what you do with negative exponents. You put them in the denominator. And then the 1 half power means a square root. So it will look like that for your final answer. Okay. Now let's just do a couple more. Let's say for the next one, I have x squared times x to the negative first divided by x to the negative fourth, and all of that is going to be squared. So first, again, I have multiplication in the numerator. That's going to be x to the second minus one because we add them because of multiplication property divided by x to the negative fourth, still squared. 2 minus 1 is just 1, so I really have x to the first divided by x to the negative fourth, all squared, which then means I now get to do the division property, which is going to be x to the first minus negative 4. Remember what we said about that earlier, that will become plus 4. And that's all squared. So it looks like I get x to the fifth, 1 plus 4 is 5, and then that's squared. And remember the power property, that's going to end up being x to the 10th power because you multiply your exponents. And there we go. Now it's also possible that you see two different variables in your problem. And, and I'll show you what to do with that. So what I'm saying is if you have x cubed times y squared 
divided by y cubed times x to the fifth. This isn't too bad. The first thing you want to do is you want to group the y's and the x's together. In other words, I would rewrite this as y squared over y cubed times x cubed over x to the fifth. That's what I would do. I think this is a good strategy. And now I have division property twice, which means I'm going to be subtracting twice. So first y to the two minus three power, and then times x to the three minus five power. It looks like I'm going to get y to the negative one times x to the negative two. And remember that whenever I have a negative exponent, I want to put that in the denominator. They're both negative. So it looks like my final answer will be one over y to the first times x squared. And y to the first, you never actually have to write that one there because it's the first power. So that's it for that one. And now let's just do one more. Fraction bar, in the numerator, I have the square root of a to the fifth times b to the fourth divided by a squared times the square root of b. So the first thing I need to do here is I need to rewrite my square roots as fractional exponents. Remember what we said about that? The square root of something is like a to the one half power. And since I have a to the fifth under the square root, it's really gonna be a to the five halves power. Also in the numerator is the b to the fourth. Again, I'm splitting this up into two problems. I'm grouping the a's and the b's together. I am gonna rewrite the square root of b as b to the one half. And this looks good right now. Again, I have the division property. So it's going to be a to the five halves minus two times b to the four minus one half. So this is gonna require some common denominators here. We'll start with the five halves minus two. So five halves minus two, that's a common denominator of two. So it's gonna be five halves minus four halves, which is one half. That's for the a, a to the one half. And then for b, it's four minus one half. Again, a common denominator of two. It's gonna be eight halves minus one half. So seven halves. Looks like a to the one half times b to the seven halves. Now, I'm not sure what your teacher wants you to write as your final answer. I think this is a fine answer, but we can also write it like this. a to the one half is really just the square root of a, because remember, the one half power means square root, because that denominator of two. And then b to the seven halves, it's the square root of b to the seventh. And that's the final answer, I would say, for this one. So hopefully this is making more sense now. If not, please post your questions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.